right, thank you very much. Uh, good morning, uh, good afternoon, evening, if you're gonna be listening to the archive. So, because I can't see, let's uh, lay down some ground rules. Um, so, I cannot, um, I cannot see like a raise of hands or whatever, so we're gonna be clapping. How many are happy with that? Okay, so how many of you actually fly in a flight simulator? All right, about all of you. And um, actually, how many of you have actually fly, flown uh, totally blind? Because that's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> so my name is uh, Sarah Alawami. I have been flying since, uh, well, flight simming since about 2017 or so. We'll be going over the add-ons uh, that we have used uh, later on. And my goal, my real life goal, is to get this actually into, the real, uh, into a real airplane so that we might be able to fly uh, for real. I, I want to get someone who is into aviation, I want to get a, a totally blind person into commercial flight, and that um, hopefully is my legacy. Now hopefully I don't die trying. All right, so, um, so you, you jump in your airplane, you, know, you take your clearance, you, um, you, know, you do whatever you need to do, you, you uh, ask for a pushback, you get your pushback, you um, taxi the runway, you ask for clearance for takeoff, you get it, you take off, you know, that, that's a pretty normal procedure, right? So, um, how many of you think you can do all of this with your eyes closed? None. Well, what you're about to see, and uh, next slide, are the add-ons that we use. So we use It's Your Plane, FSX Pilot, and for whatever reason, my arrows aren't cooperating. Okay, so we use um, uh, It's Your Plane, FSX Pilot, uh, FS Tramp, which was used between 2017 and 2019, 2018 and 2019, uh, sorry, 2019 and 2020. Uh, we used TFM 2019 to present, and we'll actually be getting more into that. PMDG, uh, how many of you know what PMDG, how many of you heard of PMDG? All right, yeah, so, um, P so would, how many who have, would have thought that if I said, I can fly a PMDG airplane, how many, how many would, uh, how many would have thought that? Yep, so we can, <laughs> we can. Thank you to TFM, next slide. Okay, so the add-ons that we use, we're first gonna go over It's Your Plane. Um, you probably don't remember It's Your Plane, we used, uh, that was, I, I believe it started in about 2000 and uh, I want to say nine or 10, there is actually going to be a video going over most of the history. So if I miss it, um, Andy and Jason will correct me on that one. And you can control it by voice, uh, checklists, uh, you could do those with your voice. Push back, um, you can do that, you could do that with your voice. Take off, um, heading speed and altitude, you could actually control all of that with your voice. And um, next slide. Okay, FSX Pilot, my, one of my least favorite add-ons. Um, you can, though, enter commands in via text. You can actually import a flight plan, however, it's gotta be in the FSX Pilot um, format. By the way, how many ever heard of FSX Pilot? None? One? <laughs> one? Okay, <laughs> don't be shy, <laughs> just one. Uh, I forgot to ask, how many heard of It's Your Plane? Okay, two of you. All right, that works. And you, you can be honest with me if you haven't, you know, whatever. Yeah. It's not, FSX Pilot is not very good at takeoffs and or landings. Uh, you also must tune every single plane. And if you lose that INI file, you're basically SOL because you've got to start over. And I mean, you have to tune every single plane for takeoff and landing. It was really annoying, but at the time, you know, that's what we had. Next slide. FS Tramp. Um, you might know about it is FS Navigator. How many ever how many have heard of FS Navigator? Uh, FS Tramp, by the way. Well, okay, FS Navigator, okay, but how many have ever heard of FS Tramp? A few. All right. Uh, how many of you liked using FS Tramp? Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm glad the developer's not here. So, cons, only cons, clunky interface. It freezed, fr freezed? It froze my system, 
it had a tendency to crash if I wanted to change the route, if I wanted to deviate uh, with uh, um, that sim. I couldn't do that because FS Tramp would just crash. It really, for me, was not worth the time to learn, but at the time, that's what we had. Next slide. T uh, talking flight monitor, heretofore known uh, from now on as TFM because it's a lot easier to say. Now, I know that none of you have heard of TFM unless uh, us visually impaired pilots have been talking about it. So it reads geo names with, it reads your location with Bing and with geo names. And you might or might not hear, it in the, hear that in today's presentation. Right now, it allows with uh, uh, PMDG at present to, you can control the CDU, you can program the CDU. You can pretty much do everything with the PMDG. And I'm gonna stress everything. Uh, and we can do pretty much everything. We can request clearance. We can know our uh, position at a gate on a good day. Uh, we can um, warp to the runway, more about that in a minute. We can uh, do everything that we can do, uh, we, that you guys can do except for one thing. What do you think that would be? Hmm? Shout it out, I can't hear. What do you think that would be? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's the only thing we can't do uh, with TFM. Uh, and I don't really wanna say yet, because we can do that online, uh, offline rather, but right now with uh, SimBrief, we cannot, uh, we cannot. And this is, this is what we have right now. Next slide. Now, uh, Declan, I know that you're not here at the moment, but um, we are gonna be now hearing TFM in use on a very, very short 24 minute flight, except he cut it down to 12 minutes, um, using TFM and uh, its functions. So uh, take it away, Declan. Next slide, uh, the video. A longer one. Oh, no, never mind, never mind. It's Andy and Jason. Okay. Oh, stop the. Yeah. Um, go back to the slide before. I missed it. Whoops, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, so, what we're going to hear now is uh, Andy and Jason. I'm just so excited to, to give this demo. Um, that, yeah. <laughs> so, Andy and Jason, they started developing TFM in 2019. They're going to go into the history. And uh, basically, we, we will be hearing a demo of TFM. We will not be hearing a demo of them flying, but they're going to be going over TFM. They're going to be go over, going over the add-ons. How this thing got started, and we're going to be, he's going to uh, end the presentation by going over what's next. So now take it away, Andy and Jason. Hello, everyone. My name is Jason Fair, and I'm here with Andy Borka. And we are the developers of a free piece of software called Talking Flight Monitor. And sorry about the broken slide the, the first time. That was just their name. So I, the first thing that people are often wonder is, as a blind person, Andy and I are both totally blind, and why would we be interested in flight simulation? Because flight simulation is you know, inherently a very visual activity. Um, you know, lots of awesome scenery and various things like that. But there are actually quite a few people uh, that are blind or low vision that are quite interested in this hobby. And the reasons can, can range from just, you know, a general interest in aviation. I mean, you know, most of us have been on airplanes, but, you know, some people want to know, well, how does this all work? What's, what, are the, what are the processes and procedures as, you know, as people are flying? So that's part of it. And the other thing is people just want to experience what it's like to be in the cockpit of a modern airliner. Several years ago, we could actually do that. We could, you know, we could possibly get, you know, if we asked, uh, we could possibly get into the cockpit of a plane, uh, but that definitely doesn't happen anymore. I'm going to talk a little bit about the history of, of flight simulation accessibility. And then I'm going to pass it over to Andy, and Andy's going to talk about the talking flight, soft, um, talking flight monitor software that we've, uh, that we've developed. So a little bit of background. Um, as I said earlier, Andy and I are both totally blind. Uh, we've been in the technology field for quite a long time. And for a blind person to use a computer, 
um, typically we would be using a piece of software called a screen reader. Uh, for Windows, the two major ones are a package called JAWS, J-A-W-S for Windows, or NVDA, uh, non-visual desktop access. And in the, the most basic terms, a screen reader takes the information that's happening on the computer screen and converts that into audible speech. So if I'm in a Word document, I can, you know, browse around and, and read. If I'm, you know, I can read my email, I can read the web. Um, when we start talking about things like flight simulation, though, we have to do some pretty uh, creative things to to make that work. So, so history of flight simulation. So, uh, as far as accessibility. Um, flight simulators are not accessible really in any way um, with Microsoft FSX or Lockheed Martin uh, prepared. You can load up the system and use the screen reader to, you know, get the plane, you know, select your aircraft, select your location as far as an airport. But then once the, once the simulation starts, um, there's, there's really nothing. You can't access the menus, you can't read the gauges, you can't do anything. So what we've needed to do over the years is come up with creative ways of getting access to this information. So the very first piece of software that I was aware of that did uh, that gave us access to flight simulation was something called FS Navigator. And this was around in somewhere around 2004. And this gave us access to uh, FS 2004 and I believe one earlier version. Um, Pretty basic, you could, you could control the aircraft autopilot through a moderately accessible interface. It wasn't designed to be accessible, but it just sort of was. Um, and so, you know, you could, you could take off, you could fly around, you couldn't really, you, well, you could follow a flight plan, um, you know, if the plan was loaded into your autopilot and you could maybe land, but probably not. Um, if, if you were very lucky, you, you, <laughs> you might be able to land. So in, tw in 2010, this is when the uh, sort of fairly large leap forward came in, uh, in access to flight simulation. And this is a product called It's Your Plane, which was produced by a gentleman in uh, British Columbia. And this was a speech um, enabled access to flight simulation. So it was actually, it was all voice activated. And this was really quite amazing for its time. Um, provided access to many aircraft systems. You could request, you know, you know, request altitude and speed and, and all kinds of things like that. Um, the problem though is that it's your plane stopped development and it was a lot of its, a lot of its features were online. So when the software was shut down, it just went away entirely. You couldn't access it online. You couldn't use it offline uh, because it was dependent on its servers that didn't exist anymore. So that was unfortunate. Um, 2013, we had something called FSX Pilot, which is um, another piece of software that allows some access to uh, the aircraft autopilot systems. Uh, but on a, again, a fairly limited way you could fly Flight plans, uh, the, 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 the flight plans that you would use with it are somewhat proprietary and it didn't actually control the aircraft's built-in autopilot. It actually took over from, uh, from that aircraft autopilot. Um, the next one that we used up until relatively recently is something called FS Tramp. And FS Tramp was a, um, sort of a spin-off from FS Navigator. I believe they used a lot of the same code base. And this was a package that allowed us to do quite a lot. Um, we could somewhat accessibly read um, airport information. We could read descriptions of SIDS and STARS, um, you know, through the FS Tramp interface, but it, it, had its, it had its share of issues. And so we, we need another solution. So. In 2019, um, I started developing Talking Flight Monitor and um, Andy joined the project in 2020, uh, I believe July of 2020. Um, Talking Flight Monitor honestly started off as a small Python project to see if I could find the 
closest city to your aircraft and read out using te text-to-speech what it was. That really is all it started as. And we, we, it, it snowballed in an unbelievable hurry. Um, once the community realized that we could, we could get that information, people started asking, well, can you do this? Can you read altitude? Can you read um, you know, any other aircraft systems? Um, so, ta so Talking Flight Monitor started in May 2019, and it's, as you'll see here very soon, um, it has, has grown into something quite huge. Um, all right. All right, so I'm going to pass this over to Andy, and he is going to talk about the key features of Talking Flight Monitor, as well as um, what is what are some of the new features. Andy. So key features of Talking Flight Monitor, or TFM as we call it, um, there are over 70 hotkeys that you can use uh, just in the main sim window itself. Some of them include altitude, speed, heading, vertical speed, uh, the nearest VOR, um, nearest city, what city are you currently flying through. Uh, you can easily control aircraft, um, autopilot controls, uh, Autopilot speed, altitude, again, vertical speed, heading. You can set comm radios, you can set navigation radios, a whole bunch of things. And uh, the autopilot or MCP comes in uh, quite a lot later when we talk about uh, something that is really cool that we had come up with uh, recently. Um, Again, as Jason said, uh, we use screen readers or text-to-speech software. In the event that somebody does not have one or their screen reader crashes, uh, TFM is self-voicing, uh, so it will pick up in self-voicing mode if it does not detect the screen reader present. And some of the things we have readout that cannot be interrupted, such as ILS, um, landing aids and things like that are self-voicing by default. Again, as I said, you have the option of using a screen reader or a braille display or both. There's audible uh, speech output for manual flight. For an example, it has attitude mode which tells you your pitch in degrees. It tells you your bank in degrees. It has an audible system, a series of tones for runway lineup. Uh, we call it runway guidance mode. So it can tell you if you're lined up on the center line. Uh, we make industry standard nav aids uh, accessible like uh, ILS approaches, RNAV approaches, things like that. Um, and the nice cool thing that came up within the past six months to a year and has ballooned quite, uh, quite a lot and quite well is the Payware PMDG aircraft series. We have extensive support for that. Um, most of the 737 and 777 uh, have support Next slide. New features uh, that will be coming up soon. A flight planner for freeware aircraft. Um, as Jason said, the FS Navigator and the FS Tramp uh, was a flight planner in a sense. But since it had its own issues, we decided to take on the task of creating our own fully accessible flight planner for freeware software, uh, freeware airplanes. Uh, a where am I and look around feature, uh, part of it has already been implemented with um, being able to see the nearest city and the city you're currently flying through. Uh, expansions would include how far are you from the nearest boundary line, such as in the US, um, 
borders, for an example, or a country's borders, uh, a city, state, town, that type of thing. Uh, aircraft profiles for the freeware aircraft. That way uh, you can tell TFM what altitude um, is the ceiling for that particular aircraft. Uh, what is the typical vertical speed that it needs to climb and descend at? And uh, future ongoing expansion of PMDG support. Next slide. If you need to get a hold of us, uh, the website is listed there on the screen, www.talkingflightmonitor.com. If you need to email us, the email address, info at talkingflightmonitor.com. We thank you for joining our presentation and I will hand it back to Jason. All right. Uh, yeah. Thanks so much for taking the time to listen and uh, definitely keep an eye on that website because we will definitely, we'll be announcing uh, new features as they. All right. So, whoops. No mic. Okay. There we go. All right. <laughs> so as Andy and Jason said. Hello everyone. Lining Hello everyone. What? Hello everyone. Uh, wait a minute. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Sorry, guys. I think that was us on okay, the back all right, here. All right. uh, can you give us a slide number or just some information so we can sync up with you? Mm -hmm. What? Oh, we think we're good. We're on the belt of the video uh, on the next we're... slide. Is that the right place to be? And like he said, you can. Oh, uh, are we are we good to go? Uh, yeah, we're on a slide that has video done by Declan. Is that the right place to be? Uh, yeah. And let me actually advance my slide because I'm not. Uh, hold on a minute. Sorry about that. Okay, there we go. We're on slide nine. All right. So as you can as you can, as you saw, you can access their website at www.talkingflightmonitor.com, and I will spell that really quickly if you're visually impaired and uh, watching the talk, and uh, you want more info. Like if you're ever watching the archives, it is www.talkingflightmonitor.com. That's a tongue twister. Okay. So. Um, now, <laughs> I'm really excited to actually present one of my um, uh, blind pilot uh, colleagues, and he is actually going to be showing what Talking Flight Monitor is. He's going to be showing the repositioning uh, from the gate to the runway. He's going to be showing takeoff. He's going to be showing getting to cruise. He's going to be showing to, uh, descent and the capture of the ILS. He's also going to be showing landing. Uh, repositioning from the gate to the runway, and he's going to be showing the cleaning up of the aircraft. So uh, take it away, Declan. Yeah. This is the PMDG 737 NGXU cockpit in P3D. It's probably something that a lot of you have seen before and are very, very familiar with. What you probably don't know is that very recently, our blind pilots community has been able to gain access to the PMDG lineup of aircraft thanks to an add-on that we use called Talking Flight Monitor, which gives us access to the CDU and panels. It's a privilege to be able to fly when you're visually impaired or totally blind. It's something that a lot of people don't even consider. And for a long time, we haven't had access to these kinds of payware aircraft. I'm here to show you a little bit about how we access them with our screen readers. When we press a hotkey in Talking Flight Monitor, we fall on the main PMDG CDU menu. And you'll be able to see it looks very similar to the FMC itself. With the blocks of text in columns, we're able to use the hotkeys, the scratch pad, all the various pages. However, they've been put into a format so that they're text and our screen reader is able to read them. Four, set up reader, blank five, FS actions reader. Here we are on the FS actions on soft key five right. And here I am uh, going three, to enter the fuel rate. and payload for a flight down to Manchester from East Midlands. Round two, auto one, less fuel services greater. You can hear it reads fuel with the left hand sign, which shows me that it's on the left and it's on soft key one. I can then go to Refresh the scratch button. pad Edit link. and type in my value. One, zero, two, zero, zero. 
blank. One, 10,206, 130.1 slash 174.4. I can then hear all the values read back to me, including the fuel which I just entered, 10,200 pounds. Here I am on the payload page. One, three, two, dot, six. Entering our zero fuel weight. Two, 129 slash 148, 28.8%, 132.6. And here I am choosing my departure out of East Midlands. Blank three, DTY4P, blank two, DTY3 and 27. I can hear the runway 27 is on soft key two right. Exit key available. Blank two, TNT two N, right flight director on, auto throttle arm switch on, auto throttle light on. You can also hear the switches being flicked as my first officer gets the aircraft ready for departure. Blank two, TNT two N. We want the Trent two November, which I can hear is on soft key Holland. two. And I know it's on two left. So hitting that and then hitting our execute key. Execute key off. Will read to me that the departure has been entered. Here I am reading through my legs page with the screen readers to check that everything's in order. 269 degrees, 0.8 nm. I can hear that the first waypoint is on a heading of 269 degrees, 0.8 nautical mile leg length. 1, D268, A250, slash 810A. The waypoint name, the speed restriction of 250, and that we need to be 810 feet or above. All of that can be read by the screen reader, and whilst you might have some trouble hearing it, it's all a matter of practice. Here's my first Hello, officer like on Flight Simulator First Officer Pro add-on, setting up the aircraft. We're now firing up the APU ready for departure. As you can hear, the screen reader is reading out all the APU switches as they are toggled. And although the visuals may not be stunning, that is not the primary concern of us blind pilots. What is, <laughs> however, is realism and the thrill of getting to fly, even though we may not be able to in real life. Apple Gen 1 off, bus light on. Engine generator off, bus light on. Apple Gen 1 off, bus light off. Engine generator off, bus light off. And there goes the bus transfer as you heard the screen reader reading out through the talking flight monitor add-on. Here we are pushing back with the help of talking flight monitor which is able to read the GSX menus. I'm going to toggle my microphone and instruct the first officer add-on. Start engines. With the help of talking flight monitor Remember which is active. able to read the engine readouts. The help of first officer pro which is able to initiate engine start and the help of GSX, whose Number menus two, two, talking flight monitor is also able to read. We're now pushing back and firing up our engines ready to go. There's no add-on that can yet give blind pilots the ability to taxi to the runway. You may have seen us on the VATSIM network asking for permission to reposition to the runway and that's exactly what we've done here. Now we're going to perform the takeoff roll with the help of the talking flight monitor add-on which will give us indications as to whether we are left or right of the runway center line and also help us rotate the aircraft before our first officer add-on will give the plane over to the autopilot so that it can fly the flight plan as published. Parking break off. Parking break off. Thrust set. Left FD master on. 23 knots. 38 knots. Beat alive. 53 knots. You can hear the auditory beeping letting us know we're a little knots. bit off the center line. So I applied a little knots. bit of rudder. Knots. You can also hear the speeds knots. being called out by the text to speech voice on the talking flight knots. monitor add on. 123 knots. 123 knots. Am I going to pull back gently? 147 knots. Up one, up two, up three, up four, up five, up six, up seven, up eight, up nine, And you can hear the text-to-speech voice calling out how many degrees of nose up we're in. Landing gear up. Taxi off. V-NAV, L-NAV, autopilot, V-NAV on, command A on, L-NAV on. Up 19, 1,000 feet. And the first officer has handed the aircraft over to the autopilot. I disabled. So that he can continue the flight plan. I can see the aircraft's leveling off at 6,000, which is a restriction on this standard instrument departure. Using Talking Flight Monitor, we're able to access all the panels, including the MCP panel. By bringing up altitude the altitude section, I'm able to press the altitude, altitude intervene, one, altitude intervene and give the aircraft permission to continue climbing. As we're now at cruise and entering our descent phase very shortly, I'm going to bring up the altitude, altitude one, north, option in Talking Flight altitude Monitor, and I'm able to Blank. type in using Zero. my screen meter, 3500, Zero. 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 which is our initial altitude for descent today to intercept the ILS of 23 right in Manchester and that ensures that the aircraft of course has permission to descend and we can check that Locking. with the screen meter MCP altitude 3500 feet 
which tells us that the MCP altitude is set to 3,500 and that VNAV currently has control of that. As our first officer ensures that the glide slope is set in the nav radios and we continue our descent on this very short flight, we're going to go to the init ref page with the screen reader and talk flight monitor, which will read our speed for flaps 30 as 147 kt or not. I can always find out the number of track miles to run, which is another feature of talking flight monitor. Distance to destination, 17 slash 0, 0, 428. Which lets us know that we have 17 miles to run until touchdown, which the software calculates will take a time of 4 minutes and 20 seconds. Approach hold on, LNAV off. Approach on, LNAV light off. As we intercept the localizer and the glide slope. Talking flight monitor begins reading in the text-to-speech voice the glide slope indication, letting us know exactly where we are on the localizer and the glide slope. It's currently reading that we are down 42%, and now 55 I can also hear that the localizer is beginning to come in to 44% right, 3% right, and so I can tell exactly what the instruments are doing. 2,696 feet AGL, 172 knots indicated, minus 1,027 feet per minute, speed edit 160, 100 length, selection 1, 4, 7. Flaps 25, flaps 30. As we're flaps now 30. fully configured into our landing for Manchester runway 23 right, and the screen reader has just read to me that we are at final flaps 30, which I've just put out. I'm going to instruct the first officer, Command B. Command B on. Now we can be sure that the aircraft will auto land itself and perform a nice smooth rollout, which is very useful for blind pilots, of course to make sure that we are exactly on the runway threshold. Landing checklist. Landing checklist. Engine start switches. Continuous. Landing gear. 2,000 feet. Down. Flaps. Set. When you're visually impaired, we have a lot of uh, add-ons which all come together. The screen meter, of course, and talking flight monitor, and the first officer pro add-on, all of which help us to fly these complex aircraft. And of course, we must thank PMDG for allowing the CDU to be accessed in such a way that Talking Flight Monitor can pull the data and show it in a text form that is readable to the feet. screen reader. As you can hear, the screen reader has just read that we call the past uh, thousand feet. Minimum. As we're approaching the runway, we'll turn on runway guidance mode to ensure that we remain on the center line. Speed like runway guidance, enable current heading. To and the aircraft is auto flaring, idling the power. Touchdown. Reverse thrust. Reverse thrust. 142 knots. 141 knots. 132 knots. You can hear the speeds being called by the text to speech of talking flight monitor again as we slow the aircraft. 91 knots. 80 knots. 79 knots. 67 knots. 60 knots. Reverse idle. Manual braking. Manual braking. 53 knots. 26 knots. And there we have it. Another successful flight with the talking flight monitor add-on as our first off. officer begins the process of clearing up the Manual aircraft off. after landing. Apple oil pressure light on. As you can hear, the APU is being fired up and all the switches are being read by the screen reader. Which is again thanks to talking flight monitor. I can hear the flaps are being retracted by the movement of the Apple, lever. Low, low pressure, light off. Of course, again, as blind pilots, we're unable to taxi the aircraft. So from here, we would reposition over to a gate and perform the shutdown flows. I hope you've enjoyed learning how blind pilots can fly the PMDG 737 and how all our add-ons <laughs> interact together. This has been a game changer for us and the access that Talking Flight Monitor has given to the PMDG lineup of aircraft is a massive step forward for our community. We can only hope that we will be able to gain access with partnerships with other developers to other aircraft in the future. We have now repositioned to a stand. I'm going to set the parking brake and have the first officer perform the shutdown flow. Parking brake on. As you can hear, the screen reader is reading through Number TFM. Number the two parking brake, ignitions, the Left FD master flight off. director. Spoilers Sweet retracted. Sweet. Navigation off. Beacon off. Taxi off. And Apple Gen 1 off. Bus light off. Engine generator off. Bus light off. Apple bleed on. Navigation on. Beacon on. Switching Taxi on. over to seat the APU. Number one generator off. The seatbelt signs off. Number two generator off. Navigation off. Beacon off. 
generators are turning off, the beacon light off. And there go the fuel pumps. It may be difficult for some of you to understand exactly what the screen reader is saying, which is why I'm just calling out the various switches. There go the packs going off for us. It's second nature and access to all these switches is really what helps us to ensure safe operation of these aircraft. It's a different kind of flying, having everything read to you instead of scanning the cockpit in front of you to see what the current state of play of your aircraft is, but all that information, the VATSIM network perhaps, the screen reader, it can be tough, but you learn how to use your ears most effectively. And there we are, S. sat on stand, currently with the APU running. And barely scratches the surface, I would say, of how we're able to fly these complex aircraft, but I hope that it has proven to the everyday simmer and developers alike that blind pilots are very dedicated to accessing these kind of aircraft and getting a sense of realism and satisfaction from simming just like anyone else. So I'm actually going to be going off the cuff a little bit and deviating away a little bit from my presentation because I can uh, <laughs> and because I just looked at the time. So. Um, you know, we would love to actually do this with Flight Simulator uh, FS20, but we cannot because it is completely, well, so the narrator mode that they have works, but we cannot effectively turn that on on our own. I mean, that's another subject for a different, you know, thing. We cannot effectively turn that on on our own. We can't really start at a gate. We can't, we start on the runway. Uh, we have to use FS Tramp to fly. We can't yet use TFM, Talking Flight Monitor. Um, you know, so I would love to use and incorporate Talking Flight Monitor into, uh, into uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator uh, 2020, because uh, that would be nice, you know, just to fly what you guys are flying and have an option. Same with X-Plane. I would switch to X-Plane in a heartbeat if it were accessible, because right now it is completely not. Um, and, you know, if anyone at X-Plane is listening, please consider making X-Plane very much accessible for the visually impaired. Hi, everyone. It's Evan, co-founder of Flight Simulation Association and one of the two people who helped put on the Flight Sim Expo show that happened in September. And I'm here today with Sarah. Hey, Sarah, how are you? Hey, I'm great. So Sarah was one of our amazing speakers. And of course, if you're watching us here on YouTube, you've seen the presentation that was given at Flight Sim Expo a couple of months ago. In the live presentation in San Diego, <laughs> we concluded everything with a an actual live demo of how Sarah flies the 737 literally blind. And we wanted to recreate that. We obviously can't give you what happened live in San Diego. But we wanted to recreate <laughs> that right here for you on YouTube. So Sarah and I managed to do some technological wizardry, we hope. We're still not 100% sure this is all <laughs> yeah. going to work out, but we think so. And, and Sarah, you're just going to basically demonstrate how you can literally fly blind in an approach to Phoenix, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, I mean, so... that's the goal anyway. Um, <laughs> hopefully <laughs> yeah. not uh, Hopefully not crash into a fireball, you know, but we'll see. Exactly. Okay, Sarah, so we're paused, kind of getting set up for the top of descent here. Just before you unpause the simulator, could you maybe walk us through? There's two programs that we can see on the screen. On the left side, there's one that's called FSFO. It's a dark blue program on the left side. Can you tell us what that does? Okay, sure. So first officer, uh, flight simulator, first officer pro or FSFO, as I will call it from now on, because it's a mouthful. Uh, that helps me to do the checklists. Um, some people use it to control speed. I use it to control, uh, and, uh, some people use it to control altitude. I use it to control checklists, uh, to do flows, such as the uh, descent checklist, which we'll be doing in a minute. Um, and then uh, the landing checklist, which we'll be doing so yeah, uh, that that's what uh, First Officer Pro is. It basically helps you control the flow, the uh, control flows. Basically, just uh, it basically helps you also get started when you're on the ground. It helps you start the plane. Helps me start the plane, obviously, because we can't do that uh, by ourselves for the moment. Yeah, and then on my right, and there goes there's... my weather. <laughs> yeah, ah. and on my right there, there is another program. And tell me what that does. So, um. So I'll probably just rephrase the question or re rephrase it because my uh, weather was going off and um, um, <clears throat> you wouldn't have heard it. So you're asking basically what uh, TFM is? Exactly. All right. So TFM, Talking Flight Monitor, as you remember, as you guys remember in the demo uh, that uh, was given, that lets me um, use uh, 
my instruments, that lets me control the plane, that lets me uh, basically check my altitude, which we'll be hearing, my ground speed, uh, my above ground altitude, my airspeed, it lets me see a heading, it lets me uh, basically it lets me do most everything that you can do with a PMG, PMDG aircraft. Right. So you're and going to be using... Soon to be freeware, but right now we're using PMDG. And so you're going to be using these two programs, plus you also have Keybind set up directly in P3D. So you're going to be switching mm-hmm. between all three of these things over the course of this approach. Yep. Over Perfect. the course of the approach. And hopefully, hopefully nothing, uh, nothing as I call borks. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> Well, I'll be so, I'll be doing my best to be the eyes of everyone who's on YouTube watching this later on. So if there's thing that sure. I want to see that, you know, obviously you can't, I'll let you know. But otherwise, <laughs> I you sure. know, I'm going to try and stay out of your way, and I'll maybe ask you a couple questions as you go. But I'd love to just see you fly this approach and arrival as you would fly it. So I'll I'll step out of your way, and we'll just watch and fly along with you. Hopefully, we can do this. So um, yeah, hopefully, 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 yeah. Uh, Hopefully this doesn't bork. So I also have a notepad window open, um, but that's only because I have I had to write down the ILS uh, frequency. Hopefully that didn't change. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to head over head on over to the P, uh, prepared window. I'm going to call it P3D now. We're going to unpause. And a few things of note. I'm going to say miles a lot. I mean nautical miles. It's just easier for me to say. So... We are descending at a nice, comfortable minus 44, uh, yeah, 1,000 uh, feet, uh, 4,400 feet a minute, not 1,000, whoa. <laughs> um, I'm going to go to my init ref page, and I'm going to enter everything into the speed tape here. We're going to go back to the legs page, and run a checklist. Landing checklist? No! No, no, no! Engine start switches. Continuous. Landing gear. Down. Sometimes Flaps. that happens. Set. No, no, no. Feet brake armed? No. Descent checklist. Descent checklist. Pressurization. Thank you. Set recall. Check. Sometimes Auto that brakes. happens. Set landing data. Checked. Altimeters. <clears throat> Checked. Approach briefing. Completed. And there's one thing I forgot to do. Checklist we have time. Uh, let's actually import the flight plan. We don't need to, but let's import the flight plan into First Officer Pro. I wish these fields actually read better, but they don't. Star. Cargo flight because we don't want to hear these announcements. And I probably did get my descent winds already. I actually can't remember if I did, but the weather's clear. Anyway, so are clear enough. And what people are hearing as you're tapping through those different fields, that's your screen reader literally verbalizing all the different fields for people for, for you to be able to hear and then interact with. Trying to. Um, that's the thing. The developers need to make sure that all fields are labeled correctly, because if they are not, um, all I'm either going to hear is button, 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 or edit, 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 or checkbox checked or unchecked. Uh, so everything must be labeled appropriately um, for us to actually get that information, which isn't the case in First Officer Pro. And I know for us that sounds pretty quick, the speed of the reader, but we were talking earlier that that's number one, of course, something that you get used to. And also that's a setting that you've chosen intentionally so that yes. everything can happen at a particular cadence for you. Yes, yes. Because if I hear, for example, Glide Soap Alive, uh, Runway 26, um, we're going to be slowing down. We're going to be slowing way the heck down. Uh, maybe. Yeah, drag is required. Uh, hang on. Speed brake armed. So we're going to turn on instrument reading. 
because I need to hear what's being read. And it's not. Oh, that's why. So you can hear the click of the switch. So. Oi. So we have columns of text. Uh, we have eagle. Wait, we have. Sorry, on sorry. The top. Can we just pause again? Thank you. Uh, the TFM just moved itself right to a bad <laughs> spot underneath the FSFO <laughs> again, and you're just about to start explaining beautifully how it all worked right in a place where no one could see it. Um, right. So you mind bringing that up, and we'll try and move it again. I have no idea why. It moved itself. That was weird. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. Uh, way back to the right, like a uh, long way. Keep going a little more. Uh, that's two to the left. Perfect. And try enter if you didn't already. That's probably why okay. I didn't. Okay, that's probably why I didn't work in the first place. Okay, perfect. So I would just say if you want to unpause and then just start that again, you were explaining how the screen reader worked. Oh. Or sorry, you were explaining how TFM worked. All right, so we are we have two columns of text. And let's actually take away the drag. Um, let's, uh, whoops. let's actually lower our altitude to 4,000. There we go. So now, we have two columns of text, 226 degrees, 11.8 nautical miles. And then below that, Eagle 6, or Eagle, rather, uh, flight level, 18,000 or above. And that is going to be the same through all the legs page, including the hold ats. So this information is literally, I guess, this software allows you to program the FMS and then this information is being fed back from the FMS so as mm -hmm. the next waypoint comes up for example this is how you can effectively see and interact with the FMS yep I can even go direct to waypoints which we will not be demonstrating at this point because I don't really want to mess up the approach um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but we will be going direct uh, let's say we had discontinuity I can take that out by going direct to a waypoint then closing the discontinuity as you showed me earlier. As I should have left. No, well, it's all right. Um, yeah, that as, was good. as you it's, saw. It's amazing. I watched you program the, the star, actually, and select the runway and select the transition, just like we would do in the FMS. And you would literally mm -hmm. pick the key that corresponded with it and then send that command to the FMS, and it would do it. It did it, and it did it fine. So, yeah. Uh, do you have a screen reader that can actually read charts, or are you no. basically using this to read the chart? We don't have charts. We don't have access to any charts. Uh, in fact, no right. charts will read with the screen reader, which is unfortunate. Um, because I'd love to know, like, the transitions to the runways, to the ILS approaches. I mean, that's the yeah. thing we're missing. Yeah. So, we just got a CDU message. Um, lucky, lucky the drag required after some waypoint. Um, which... Speed we break on. We... Let's uh, make some passengers sick. So yay! Transition altitude. Is there when you're flying? Uh, so va like Shot. later on when you get some hands on, are you using a yoke, joystick, any other hardware controls? Yeah, um, I have a throttle to my left, which I have idled, and then I have a yoke to my right, uh, both made by Thrustmaster. I plan on actually getting the. Um, let's take off the hand brake. Er, hand brakes. I'm not in a car. Speed brakes. Um, <laughs> I plan on actually getting the Turtle Beach um, thing that was presented at FSF, uh, FS Expo. I have too many add-ons on the brain. FS Expo uh, this year. So that thing was cool. Yeah, that Velocity one flight that they had on the which I think oh, just came out for pre recently. And it, it reminds me a lot of the very popular SciTech product. I think it was actually created... I think by maybe some of the same team that made that. So it's oh, a very wow. cool, like all in one unit, and you're not looking at having to buy a separate throttle quadrant. Yeah. Like, everything is kind of in one place for it. I think it'll really be popular, especially with the, not to say that it's only them, but I do think anyone who plays this on a console, oh, I think that'll yeah. be really interesting for them. Like it's, I can, it's in I don't your know lap? Of, 
Exactly, well, yeah. sort of in your lap. Not really, but... Uh, it could be. It's yeah. a little big um, <laughs> to be in your lap, but, I mean, the, just the concept is just awesome. All right, so let's, uh, let's refresh the uh, the screen here and see where we are here. We're heading toward Homer, um, and we're supposed to be... At 17,000 feet or below, which will make it. Um, yes, if I were doing this on VATSIM right now, uh, it would be exceedingly stressful. <laughs> I do quite fly a big on. community. That, well, I mean, you're one of them, obviously, but I'm I talk quite a bit to the Vision Airlines pilots on Vatsim in the Boston area, so I'm a controller there, and yeah. it's absolutely incredible. Like, uh, and I see in the remarks people. often they'll say, like, blind pilot unable to taxi, but that's the only way that I would know that there's anything different, because the way that you're, everyone is able to fly and to meet all the restrictions and to fly all the headings, it, you would never know as a controller. Yeah. Whoa, we're supposed to be at 210? Okay, fine, let's slow down then. So we're slowing down to 210. We have... Uh, we just checked our um, uh, ASL and AGL. And now, we, uh, we wait. Well, I didn't tune the ILS, so let's actually do that now. I'm going to actually verify the frequency in the init ref page, even though I don't think that's okay. I don't even know why I copied that to the clipboard. It's a habit. <laughs> you know, old habits die hard. So we're going to... One 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 dot seven five. So we're gonna pull up the nav radio. Nav radio. One 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 dot seven five. And of course, this two five eight. Five well, okay, we are supposed to be at two fifty, but. Oh well, it's okay. It's the wrong Nobody's speed. Counting. But really, no one's watching. And if anyone has anything to say about it, they can go through you. Exactly. So for me, I can, uh, you know, in terms of like the vertical profile. Obviously, I can see there's a little icon that's showing me how high and how low you are. How do you tell that from your perspective? How do you mean? How do you know? So earlier, for example, you were bringing out speed brakes and bringing them back in. How did you know when to do that? So I had a CDU message saying drag required. Um, so I brought okay. in the speed brakes. Uh, but I can actually hit a key on uh, TFM. Minus 11, feet per minute. And know that I'm going at minus 1191 feet a minute. That's oh, awesome. Did send path on a cheap Beat break on. Let's fix that. And let's, let's go to our, um, page. Page. And we'll be fine. 11,772. Well, let's just call it 12,000 feet. I'm not going to be exact here. Yeah, American 1040, descend to 11,772 feet. Uh? <laughs> <laughs> you said you controlled for Boston, right? I think I've had you before. Yes, yeah, I worked Boston Center on Batson. Not as often as I'd like, but often enough. I plan on, uh, on whether the matter of going by. Clouds, temperature, I hate talking over my screen reader, even though what just went across my screen wasn't important. I mean, it was, but yeah. Um, I think I've had you before, and I plan on actually learning how to, trying to learn how to uh, control. That'd be amazing. You guys, there's, I think, believe that Ross, who's the developer of a bunch of the controlling clients, he's working on accessibility features, I, th I think, for some of the controlling That's clients what I as heard. well, right? 
That's what yeah. I heard. I'm not sure how yet, but, um, you know, we'll get it to work. <clears throat> I can certainly think of some positions like, you know, clearance delivery, for example. And ground. That would be a very that's easy it. one. That's the only thing we can do right now is clearance delivery and ground. Yeah. I mean, it'd be nice if we could do tower, but right now it's just not feasible. Not unless we ask every pilot, what's your position report, and keep them in right. our heads. There's just no... There, I bet you... You know, go ahead. So, well, I was just going to say, not that we simulated their app, but anything that would be non-radar, like Oceanic, for example, especially mm -hmm. a few years ago when they used to use only position reports, I mean, that would be perfect. It would have been, yeah. And we just passed 10,000 feet. Uh, First Officer Pro told me this. So NAV-1 has localizer. Localizers are alive. Runway heading 80 or 8, something like that. I didn't actually catch the last part of it, but it's alive. <laughs> and if I were on Vatsim right now, I'd be crapping boulders. But anyway. <laughs> um, you, yeah, I think I've had you. You sound familiar now that I think about it. Yeah, I have to keep an eye out for you in my airspace. It's always the same. You always see that American call sign used earlier. Ten. Um. Was it? Yeah. Do you want to explain what happened? Because I mean, the earlier probably won't be. Yeah, but what? Yeah. Um. Do you want to explain well, we kind of what happened earlier when we were kind of simulating yeah. stuff? <laughs> yeah, well, we've we've done this a couple of times now because <laughs> the way that you explore well, the way that you experience this is very different than the way I'm experiencing it, right? So it's just a, a totally different thing. It's a little bit of, of my perspective, you know. Just the fact that, like, I'm watching a screen that you can't see, and you literally have no idea what's looking out, you know, what's outside your window. It's such an, an interesting way for me as a pilot to be looking at what you're doing, and like mm -hmm. the concept of flying is just so cool to watch. So yeah, we had uh, earlier on a uh, situation where I think Sarah thought the airplane was in a different place, and I'm looking at it, going, "No, you're over here," and she's like, "Are you sure I'm over there?" So yeah. we decided we would uh, we would take take number two or three at this point of this particular approach. But she was going to make it either way. Uh, the first time we did it, it just took a couple of extra tries so we thought we'd maybe try and demonstrate one that yeah, hopefully yeah. goes a little bit more smoothly so far oh, it's hopefully good <laughs> hopefully so we were at 634 feet agl 7807 feet asl um i either go by american 1040 fdx or fdx um 50 uh, 1572 right now i've been atlas a few times no, I've been giant a few times. <laughs> can you um, see the like the name of the controllers? No. Uh, well, I can if I looked. If I were on uh, VatView. Yeah. Uh, but I normally don't. I just don't. Yeah. Glide swoop alive. And I'm bad about looking at. I mean, I rarely have reason to look at the pilot call signs or. Not unless either, I'm being so. erratic or, you know, just whatever. Even, even then, really. But I'll have to. I will do my best to listen first of all because <laughs> I should recognize your voice by now. You would think. You think. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I better start paying attention. I better slow down to 170, even though this thing says 210. No way. Uh -uh. I don't trust this plane. I mean, I trust it, but it's okay. We're now putting up flaps. Flaps one. Six thousand feet. And as you could hear, flaps two. Um, FSFO is telling me flaps one, flaps two. Flaps five. And flaps five. We flaps five. are not ready to actually go to flaps ten yet. Uh, let me just speed break on. I'm sure you probably know this as well, but I can tell you you're about maybe. F uh, from what I could see, maybe five or six miles, maybe even less than that, from intercepting the localizer. So it's looking good. I think it's looking good anyway. Yeah. I just hope I can slow down in time. Yeah, it looks good to me. Lane the gear down. Flaps 10. Flaps 10. This is the destination. 14 slash 0, 0, 4, okay. 10. We're, we're fine. We're actually fine. I slowed down right on time. <coughs> no way was I going to yeah. be at 210. No way. Like I said, sometimes these speeds just don't make any sense. I mean, maybe for a tiny, tiny Cessna or a tiny, tiny 
plane that can actually slow down, but yeah, not for this. Yeah, most jets are like that. They're very slippery. They have like to descend and slow down at the same time. So speed management is the key. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, what I did probably would just yeah. I think a pilot would just cringe. No, I mean, it did makes a lot of sense, especially lowering the gear. That's something people don't think about. How do I get slowed down, especially if you're above flap well, speed? So as long as you're below the gear speed, that's the best speed break you've got, is dropping that landing gear. Mm-hmm. We're going 15. to flaps 15 a little bit early. Approach, hold on. Approach, hold on. Approach, hold off. El nav off. Be nav off. El nav off. Be nav off. I've got it. No smoking sign off. Landing checklist. Landing checklist. No smoking sign on. Engine start switches. Continuous. Landing gear. Speed brakes. Down. Flaps. We're not set. Let's just count on the set, set. right now. Checklist complete. Flaps I am 30. slowing down to approach speed. Which was 140. A little slower than I'd like. Ah, you know what? I'll come in a little fast. Yikes. <laughs> oh, come on. Go to flaps 40. Come on. Come on. Flaps 40. Thank you. Flaps 40. That was my 1,000 call. My 700 feet per minute. We're looking good. Actually, minus 700 and something feet. We're looking really good. So now, the plane just flies itself. I think I on the speed brakes. Oh, wait. Command be on. CMD be on. CMD command be off. So, that's going to be fine. Um, what you heard was command be on, command be off, but we're going to be fine. I'm glad I remembered. Let me just quickly check the speed brakes. Nope. Gear down. Speed okay. brake armed. So we were we were fine. Okay, good. Now I normally don't do that, but because I was narrating, I wasn't paying attention. So, <laughs> to me. Here we go. Eighteen fifty nine. Three thousand feet. Slowly checking stuff. We're looking good at minus 791 feet a minute. 1426 and 1426 feet AGL. 2574 uh, ASL. And we're at 142 knots. Indicated. So now, we just let the plane fly itself. I'm going to be controlling the reverse thrust, by the way. So, I will actually narrate when I do that. But right now, I'm going to shut up and hope that we land. Two thousand feet. Two thousand feet. I'm narrating the screen readers because you guys might not be able to understand it. <clears throat> Five hundred. Five hundred. Four hundred. Four hundred. <clears throat> 300 Shut up, weather Minimum 200, minimums One hundred. 100 Here we go 50, 40, 30 Speed light off 10 Temperature United States 3.0 multiple miles Reverse thrust.
124 knots. 17 knots. 100 knots. 90 knots. 80 knots. 60 knots. Reverse manual idle. Braking. Well, now manual braking. Manual braking. Minus 344 feet a minute. Minus 344 feet a minute. Uh, that's beautiful. And, low pressure light up. and now he's going to do the flaps. Well, almost. There we go. He sounds so dainty when he's touching that knob. Just. <laughs> and, low pressure light off. and I'm hearing the uh, lights. Ap uh, APU oil pressure light off. And if I wanted to, I could actually go through the uh, cleanup flow. So um, I can do that. I mean, we're not at a gate, but, you know, um, fictitious, you know. <laughs> um, because so, there's still, as far as I understand, there's no way for you to taxi. No, we can't. So we have to actually reposition to a gate. Which, right. Actually, why don't we do that? Why don't we do that? So I brought up the... Um, and we are going to go to, let's see, oh, gate 10, uh, 8, 10, yeah, gate, gate 10. I can normally do that a lot faster, but since I'm narrating this, so we are now positioned at a gate, by magic, and we are going to run through the cleanup flow. Parking brake on. Number one, off. Number one ignition off. Number two ignition off. Number two ignition off. I hope I can keep up. Left light director off. Left light director off. Left light off. Right light off. CD master off. Hey, hey. Put that noise. Um, um, now all the engine generators off. APU bleed is on. Uh, uh, something's on. Something else is on. Uh, there's a generator group that's off. A beacon off. A number two generator off. I'm trying to keep up and I'm failing. All the fuel pumps are going off. Uh, so now, I'm going to actually go to the menu. Uh, the hydraulic pumps are going off. I'm going to go to the uh, fuel pump generator. I'm going to go to the five bright, and then go to services or connections, as it is sometimes called in the PMDG 777. Spoilers retracted. Spoilers have now been retracted. Uh, and we are going to set the chocks. Ground power one, ground power I did that in the sim. Two, the we are going to request ground power. I'm going to pull up the electrical panel, which this isn't complete. So I'm showing you something that is kind of incomplete here. Uh, so we have ground power available. I'm going to turn on ground power. We are going to turn off the APU. Uh, we are going to turn off the APU. Sometimes my co-pilot likes to just play little tricks on me. we are going to turn off the battery. And we are now set for another go. Well, sir, that was beautiful. Thank you. Sir, thanks for this. This was a lot of fun for me to take part in. I know I watched your talk live, but then to be able to see you demonstrating <laughs> the approach and the landing yeah. and just to be with you watching and experiencing how you are able to experience this has been really cool. So huge thank you both for putting on a great show hey, in San Diego and for this part of it. And I hope for people who are sighted and who are flying in the Sims regularly, you've gotten a whole new perspective on what flying can look like. And if there's anyone out there who's thinking vision is an impairment to being able to fly in the simulator, we've just proven that's completely it really wrong. isn't for sure well yeah. again thank you this has been a lot of fun and it's, for it been. anyone who wants to learn more please look at the links in the notes with this video yes. explore bvi pilots explore sarah's discord and, and keep learning and we all will thanks again sarah it's been a lot of fun i hope to be back next year uh, yes well, we'll, or whenever there's a yeah we hope so too thanks again yay you're welcome bye